Hey, what's up guys? Johnny Guns here, bringing you a uh, demo of my Scotto that I picked up here about a month ago now. Uh, maybe a little over a month, but uh, let's get right to it. Right here, you, you're looking at a Falcon motherboard here. This is uh, a JTAG, but what's going on with it? I can't. It's got a stock NAND on it. It's 7371, Colonel, Dash Colonel, and uh, the South Bridge. Something's up with that. I'm not able to read and write to the NAND via SPI. So, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to show you a demo of my Scottle swapping out the South Bridge. So, we're going to pull this one. We're going to clean the uh, ball grid array or BGA base here on the motherboard. And then we're going to pull a good one off a board that uh, doesn't have a good GPU, CPU, whatever. And we're going to reball it and we're going to reweld it to this board. So, we're going to go through that and I'll show you how that looks with a uh, Scottle IR360. That's what we'll be using. So we'll get right into it. Let's get these X clamps out of here. Once again, we're going to be using the uh, Team Executor X clamp removal tool. You'll see the kit number five here. You're wondering what this is. Uh, that's been put on there in advance because what I was going to do is uh, you're probably, if you're following me on Twitter, you saw that um, I was using a demon to read, but uh, it's just you got to take the demon off and to, for it to boot. There's all kinds of weird little funky things with here. So I'm going to restore just regular reads so the gentleman I'm doing this for will be able to just use his own Nandex and not have to finagle like when he wants to update the dash in the future. So easier, be honest with you, easier to uh, <laughs> uh, do this swap than, uh, than mess around with that demon. I mean, it, it was actually not too bad, but I'm just going to do it just so I have peace of mind later that I know the gentleman here will have ease of access to programming it and not have to, you know, finagle. So here we are. Now, one thing I like to do right off the bat, instead of uh, using a solvent to clean off this right here, I take some dry Q-tips and I just scrape off what I can around the corners. Because you'll notice, uh, some of you guys that have done this a lot, you'll notice that if you use solvent, uh, you'll all the... Um, the paste gets all over the resistors and whatever diodes, whatever's up on top here, capacitors, whatnot. So that's what I do first. Get it off as much as possible. CPU. Sometimes you have to use quite a few, but I've gotten better at uh, not wasting my supplies here. Okay, so you can do that without solvent, pretty much. What I'm using here, if you're wondering, I've got this. Uh, Method of ketone, which I use, and I love this stuff. It's just I, I tell you over and over again that um, it's just not good for your brain, if you will. But there it is. Methyl ethyl ketone. You can pick that up at Lowe's in the states here. I don't know. I read some articles. If you're in Canada, I read some articles that it's on short supply. They try to. There's all kinds of political nonsense with this stuff up there. Some people are saying it's for, you know, they're trying to keep it out of the hands of people with meth labs and whatever. I don't know, man. <laughs> there we are. Nice clean. You can see the reflection and the shininess of the dyes on the top here. Next, what I like to do is I like to get some heat resistant tape here or uh, capped on tape here. It's this stuff, you can get that from SRA solder or. Uh, bgamods.co.uk This stuff's good stuff. Just uh, resist heat. It's not going to totally shield from heat, but it definitely helps out a little bit. So you're still going to get stuff warming up on you, if you will. So I take that. Since we're going to be working around the uh, soft bridge here, I'm still going to tape off 
this guy. And anything, anything plastic or capacitor wise, I'll show you here. I like to shield that up before I put some foil, reflecting foil tape on there. I'll get some here on the network controllers here and all that good stuff up on the capacitors. I've done a couple of these already and this works out pretty well here. I just like to get all the capacitors covered. If you're worried about uh, popping a capacitor, just use a couple extra layers of foil tape. I, when I did a uh, CPU swap, I had, to do, I had to use three layers. I experimented on a dead board one layer doesn't cut it. Two, you still get some uh, swelling out of the capacitors. Three did the trick. Only one swelled up just a tiny bit, you could tell. So if you really want to protect stuff, don't be afraid. I've had uh, reports that um, sometimes covering stuff up causes you know heat buildup underneath. I haven't had that issue doing it just like this, so. This is uh, capped on here. Well, you know what? Let's put some on the hand here as well. Just because we're going to pretty much be covering this with the top IR heater. So, we're going to cover all this up. Time crystal. Let's get everything covered. Okay, next, we'll use this stuff here reflectant foil tape here. And this just reflects heat. It really, I mean, it reflects as much as possible, but you're still going to get uh, absorption through everything. And what I like to do when you're fluxing for a pole, I like to make sure I get this pretty close and make sure that it's really sealed down in here. It keeps the flux from going underneath this tape. That's a real pain sometimes. Like if, you're, if you just slap it on there and let it go. What I do is make sure it's sealed at the base where you put it here. Easy way of getting the tape off too is um, you fold it over and then kind of push it back or pull it back and it usually separates it from the backing. And you'll notice, like, if you, when you're beginning with doing this, you'll notice this will curl up on you and it'll get stuck together. You might have to wad up and throw it out. That's normal. So, once again, I get as close as I can without getting too close because you need some space. And then just really draw your finger down so you seal it off. This necessarily doesn't have to be standing up you know you see a lot of them like with it like flowered out a little bit you don't have to do that you can lay it flat it's just keeping reflecting as much heat as possible just so the board doesn't get overheated in that area and something else and stuff doesn't move around I kind of like it uh, doubling as a um, you know, it keeps everything in place so nothing is blown around or whatever. Moved around if you're moved just a little bit. Last one. I just, I, I, you know, some people have said they have methods of cutting these all down into little pieces. You just kind of you get good at it after a couple, you just get uh, used to doing it. And you just cut the right pieces right the first time. So this one's being a little pain because of the resistors, so... I just like to make sure there's a solid seal so the flux that I'm using doesn't go all over the place underneath this tape. Looks pretty good. So, you know what I do on the dead board, like if I'm only pulling something here in a second, I will zoom up. But uh, on the dead board, 
The one I want to work on and repair and bring back to life, I usually do all this precaution. Usually you don't have to go through all this crazy stuff when you're um, pulling a good one off. If everything else is like dead or stuff is missing, you don't have to be as careful, in my opinion anyways. It's always good to be careful in general. These smell terrible when they blow, by the way. <laughs> I mean, if you don't get killed by the MEK, you're going to die from <clears throat> the fumes coming out of the capacitors. I'm just kidding. But let's uh, cut to a closer scene, and I'll show you what everything looks like close up here. All right, here we are with a close-up with the south bridge on the Xbox Falcon board. You can see that I've sealed it down just by pressing. You know how you fold a piece of paper and you want that crease to really stand out, you kind of use your fingernail a little bit. That's what I do just to make sure it's sealed all the way around. Sometimes no matter how hard you try, you still get some leakage underneath, but that's fine. I mean, a little MEK will uh, take care of that and get you cleaned up. I'm using a King Bow Flux. It's RMA 218. And uh, I just have syringes. You can, I honestly couldn't tell you where to pick them up out of a store, but I have my sources. So. I just put it in a, a syringe, a medical syringe, and I'm just around the edges. But I'll show you what I'm going to do first, actually. I've got a uh, thermocouple here that you can see that I'm going to use. This is a, uh, this one's been beat to heck, but it still works great. I'm going to take this down right here, right next to the chip, with another piece of uh, reflecting tape. So, we'll go grab it. You can see I cut a large piece here, but... I'll show you what you do. So you get that fairly close to the chip. Try to get it down. Not touching the board, it doesn't have to touch the board, but you can see right on the edge of the tape, kind of just to get an idea. And then you taper down. I used a lot of reflectant on this, but you get the idea here. There. So you can see how close that is to the chip. That gets you. Uh, really accurate readings. I always follow it up. You'll see I use this little, um, I'll back up and show you in a second here, but I use this uh, Ideal 61-312 multimeter, which has uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit built in. So I use that outside of using the machine. So I'll back this out in a second and I'll show you what I'm doing here. You'll see this is the machine I'm talking about, this little multimeter here. And you turn it to Celsius. So we're at 27 Celsius, 85 Fahrenheit. So it is pretty toasty in this uh, in this uh, shop here. Celsius, a lot better than uh, back in July and August. <laughs> but I'll get a tighter angle here, and we'll we'll flux it up. Okay, so here we are. I just uh, take the syringe, the back end of it with my thumb like this, and I just apply just a bead around each side to get a nice clean pull and you'll notice the uh, thermocoupler kind of gets in the way but that's alright just gonna work around it so that's it that's flux that's all you gotta do for that and uh... Let's take a quick break here and we'll get that fitted to the scottle. One thing I forgot to show you guys, whenever you're throwing a board on your scottle or achi or whatever you're using for a rework station, you want to uh, throw some of that uh, kept on tape on the bottom too, which I'm going to do. I've got this QSB in here as well, so I'm going to tape that down. So let's grab some of that and uh, get this all covered up. Now, we're talking about uh, swapping the south bridge. That one's kind of tricky because it's uh, on your support, on the scottle. There's uh, not a lot of room. All you need to do is throw that on. Get another piece. This guy up too. Put it right here. I'm gonna double tape it on 
this one side. Yeah, just keep the heat away from it. Okay, let's uh, get everything fitted into the scuttle here. So there we are once again. Everything masked off and uh, flexed. So let's get everything set up. Alright guys, here we are at the scuttle. What I have is I have two supports on both ends here. Board supports underneath that I can move around. And I'm going to have to move these around a little bit for the uh, work I'm going to be doing tonight. So, let's pick up the, uh, the deal here. If I'm lucky, I was just doing this the other day, and I do have to change it. So what I like to do is just kind of unsnug these, move these back like this, and we'll see that we'll be working backwards a little bit. So, Put this in here. There's another spot right here as well. Up front. So just get everything set in. And then you can kind of play around. Like if you unsnug everything, you can kind of move things around and we need to go this way. A bit. Keep in mind, this does look a little different when you're doing it without a camera rolling, so when a camera's going, you tend to take more precautions and this and that, and you end up looking like more of a doof than... <laughs> but when you're working normal, uh, normally, um, this is pretty quick here. So then you can pull these as well. Another thing is, these board supports, if they're up too high and you're moving stuff around, it's going to snag on some components, so sometimes it's best. These are calibrated. I've gone through a couple times, so they work good on you know, all the boards I've been working on lately. So just, you know, kind of thread those down so they sit down a little bit and then get this position first. You can kind of see your top heater here. I like to get it as much as I can here. You can see I'm all the way over, if you will. I'm all the way over on the left. I've got these pulled tight. So usually with a south bridge, since it's so far over, I kind of have to angle a little bit like this. And uh, my under nozzle is a little off. So what I do is I just uh, bring it down quite a bit. It's uh, the same temperature as my uh, preheater, but still I don't like it uh, like I usually do on like a GPU back here. It's usually up fairly close and this sets down fairly close too. Okay, so do your adjustments here as best you can. And bring the chip back as best you can. It's going to be a little off center from the little nozzle below. So I just back it down a little bit so I'm not, uh, you know, there's that QSB right underneath as well. And I just position this. It's not going to be 100% square down on the board. That's fine. What I do actually. The reason why I haven't fired up the machine yet, there is that little uh, lower nozzle fan and that uh, it gets pretty noisy here. But that will allow you to see a little better. So I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit more and show you some things here. You can see down here that the supports are now away. So what I do is just kind of bring this up just a little bit. And there's a lot of little things you got to do to make sure everything's lined up. I mean that's a little tedious at first, you might be like, oh man, you know, but once you do this quite a bit, it becomes second nature. So don't fret there. And I'll look down, make sure these supports aren't resting on any components under there. And I bring it up just until I see it rise. But first, what you want to do is make sure these board supports, you can get this back as far as you can. So we've got that nozzle right underneath us here. So I'm going to tighten these down now. So I think I've got a pretty good angle of attack here. So 
is tight, this is tight. Board's snugged in there really well. My supports are... I still need to get the back ones here, so... What you can do sometimes is just spin this out of the way, bring this up, you know that these are not in the correct spot, so you can bring them. they got nice little uh, set screws here. So you can, you can't really see that, but you can move these back and forth and set them, which is nice. Got that. This is good. That's good. Let's look under here, see where we're at. I'm good back there. I'm going to move it a little bit because I see it is near something. And once again, just for the video, I'm doing things a little bit differently. One thing you want to remember too is you'll be adjusting everything, everything's almost good, and you forget these little set screws, uh, they're down below, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. You'll be uh, getting everything calibrated and everything starts to move around, I just don't forget to set these down, these two right here, that way everything is rock solid. Let's get my supports, just need a little tweaking back here, perfect. I am totally clear of all components. I'm going to tighten down the set screws. You'll see here that, once again, this is going to be a little off-center. That's totally fine. And Southbridge chips, you know, they, they typically don't take a lot of energy to, to lift. It's the bigger chips like CPU, GPU that you really, you got to get up there 220, 225 Celsius. So once again, what you can do is hold down This is the fun stuff people don't show you. You know, they get everything set up. I mean, that's the main part, getting set up. You're seeing everyone, any video you watch on YouTube, really, that shows people, um, you know, reflowing, reballing, there's a lot of time that went into it behind the scenes. I mean, you're not just going to get one of these machines and then, you know, pretty much throw it on the table and throw boards on it and it's going to work. You're going to have to actually read a lot. You're going to have to talk with people quite a bit that, has, that have experience with this kind of thing. Some people, you know, they've got their little techniques down and they don't really say much about it, what they do, but but then there's some like uh, BGAMods.com, the forums there, and those guys are awesome over there. A lot of support, a lot of patience. Believe me, if uh, I could record the conversations I've had with those guys uh, talking about stuff over text message, <laughs> you'd be like, what? This tutorial editor guy is, you know, crazy. I mean, that's how I got to where I am now. Just a lot of questions, a lot of reading. So that's that. So okay, all my supports are uh, threaded up so they just rest on the bottom. You know, you're going to think I'm crazy here, but this actually works pretty well. I found that uh, if I wasn't doing this, I was getting a little warpage on certain uh, certain applications. Like if I was on, I don't know, something further over here, GPU or this. What I do is I take hemostats here. I have these you can find at uh, Fry's Electronics or possibly even Walmart. They're they're like around three bucks. I mean these are from once again from the medical field. And all I do is uh, I don't know if you can see this too well. There's little pegs that actually stick up on the side. You might be able to see some over on this side. Let's see if we can. So you'll see this little peg right here. It's really kind of hard to see on the camera, but you take this down and you push down and then uh, click it in. So there's no way that's going to warp or rotate or do any weird stuff. And I do that back here on this one. Just keeps everything locked right in place. I only use three right now because I, I have to buy another one for the other side. But three does the trick. Actually, two does if you do it on one side and the other. I've had great luck with that. So I'm going to get this probe out of the way here. Also, certain setups, machines and whatnot there, you'll get this uh, other thermocoupler here. And this actually just sets down, just like the other one. I'm actually going to do it on the side, on the front, towards us with this one. So we've got one on the left, and we'll have one on center. Don't be afraid to get a little flux on it. I mean, that's normal. So that's pretty much what it looks like. I'm going to look again here. 
we've got the nozzle right underneath or off center to the left of the chip but that's all right I've done this successfully quite a few times so this is usually what the setup looks like it's back a little further and you've got some of these plates showing that's normal then you get your top here it's gonna be a little off center but that's all right what I do is I take one of these tools you can get these at Radio Shack this little um tool here and I just kinda like put the little thing on the middle of the chip and I see look at it straight up and down see how far this side arrow is and then I get it right there set this right here Let's see it straight there we go so that's pretty much dead center almost that's what I do anyways and I look give it a little visual look and see how it looks underneath so that's good it's uh, technically ready for a lift so what we'll do here in a second is we'll uh, go ahead and fire up the machine I'll get a wider angle so you can take a look here all right here's the uh, close-up here you can see the two lights I've got on the Scottle IR360 Pro and uh, you can see everything's flux and ready nothing's been turned on so we're gonna hit the uh, start I've got my profile here and I'm gonna tell you right now there's a lot of variables with the profile depending on what climate you're in if there's a draft in your shop or barn or you know basement whatever's going on depends uh, differences with um, you know summer winter fall spring all that stuff so you'll be able to find my profile on bjmods.com under Scott Scottle IR360 query so if you want to take a look at what it looks like for my machine I don't have a set end to my profile I just go into like feel the chip and I, I can tell just by feel from nudging the chip when it's uh, a proper time to lift so a lot of trial and error let's go ahead and uh, start this so what we'll do is we'll hit start now here in just a second I'm going to uh, fast forward and you will see everything take place here Okay, right, so we're nearing temperature right now. Roughly that takes around nine minutes or so. So let's uh, take a look. We're just below temperature. I'm just going to give it a little nudge here. I've got this little wooden dowel. So we're still seated down. There's no movement at all. Meaning we still have to wait until temperature. We're just almost at temperature. So I just kind of lightly... You'll know when it moves. It, it, it moves like just by touching it. So... We're not there yet. What I like to do is uh, get the vacuum pen, my finger on the vacuum pen button here, and I'll show you. There we are. Do you see that? Move just a little bit. Vacuum on. This side out of the way. Vacuum and switch it around a little bit. And that is it. That is it. Take that. I put the chip right down on a heat sink. That cools it off. Shut the profile off, we're good. Let's get that uh, top IR cooler on. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna leave this on here so you can get a good look at it. And let's turn one off so we can get a better shot. So there's the uh, ball grid array, if you will, the, uh, the base of it here on the board. And literally what you can do, right as you're waiting for everything to cool down, Grab your solder. And what I like to do, I'm gonna tip off real good. And uh, for starters, you can get this is my thin stuff, and this is the uh, get that probe out of the way. You would use a different kind of soldering iron. This is the only one I have right now, but you can go through and uh, pick up. Some guys like to throw a little bit of flux on there, but usually the residue left over you can actually just go over it without even touching the pads with your iron at all the little solder ball here 
you find it's not doing as well as you'd like, just throw some flux on there and it will do it. But there, we'll just place that right on the side. Literally, that's how fast you can clean. There, it's a small area. I mean, you can fit, it's about the size, a little bit bigger than a quarter, the pads here. So what I like to do, after we do that, you know, there's these little things you can get. Mine's got quite a bit of flux in it. I should have had a new one for the video, but you can get these little um, spongy type things from like Lowe's. You know, it's like a, I don't know, something to do with paint. <laughs> I usually just use a bristle brush for painting, but it does something. It's like trim, you know, but you just, you literally, you just take it and you dab just a little, just a, it sucks it right up. I mean, you don't need much. And what you can do is just literally a couple little swipes, and it's clean. That way you can throw on some fresh, fresh uh, flux for your uh, braid cleanup. So we'll be right back, and we'll get to the braid cleanup. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and get some more flux. Some better lighting for you. I like to do like a little X on it. Like, you know how you, uh, you see the car washer guys, they go down, X and around. Well, that didn't work out too well that time, but... What I've been using for a wick is this stuff here from Fry's Electronics MG Chemicals. Uh, the .10 inch width on that. This stuff's been fantastic, I just... You can see I've had too little lead going here while doing it, and then the, uh, the braid actually gets into the plastic here. <laughs> so, that's what that's from. Make sure you trim this often. Since it's so fine, it actually uh, really picks up this stuff and it turns into pretty much a solid tinned bunch of wire. So you gotta clip it off often. It pulls, like if you're doing, like uh, cleaning off the chip to reball it, you're gonna have to clip it off quite often. A lot of people, there's a couple cool techniques. You can chop some off and then throw it on top. Me, I like to have control on it with my hand like this while we do while we have the soldering iron over it. Make sure your soldering iron is clean. Use one of those uh, little um, either a sponge or one of those it looks like wool or um, steel wool and you just keep cleaning your tip because it needs to be clean to transfer that heat to the braid. So I'll do my best here with the camera angle and literally I like to start Usually at a corner, but to get going, I like to get the uh, flux melted out quite a bit here. You'll see if you don't get a good transfer of heat, you'll see that it's already oxidizing on the end of this. So clean that off. Sometimes you need to spread the flux out a little bit. But as soon as you get a good contact, it literally glides around the uh, the pads here. So you can see right off the bat, get my hand out of the way, and you can see the difference. inspect your uh, wick often. Sometimes you'll uh, find yourself having to use quite a bit of flux. You'll feel an area that's not picking up as well anymore. And then you're... Every time I'm done with an area, I clip off until I'm back to a fresh braid. Make sure your tip's clean. Sometimes you'll have to put a little bit of solder on your tip to get some heat transfer to your braid. Don't pull, just let, just uh, wipe it around.
If you feel a little bit of snag, just be careful. Lean your tip off a little bit. Tin your tip just a tad. Sometimes you need to get a little bit of cider on the tip for it to transfer over. I like to just kind of feel it real quick to see if um, there's any bumps or anything. To be completely honest, that looks like a decent first pass through. And this is easier. You'll find like some of the chips on the board are easier to do. In my opinion, cleaning off the CPU uh, array is actually quite easy. Once again, you're wondering, well, how do you get to doing this stuff? Well, YouTube mainly. A lot of you are wondering, like, did you learn somewhere or someone teach you? No, I just watch YouTube a lot. Read a lot of forums, what people did. It's a lot of experience. When you first get into uh, reballing, swapping, and all that stuff, anything to do with this, you're going to find it's tough at first. You're going to fry some stuff. And don't feel like you're a complete noob. I mean, everyone went through it before. Everyone that started out had to read a lot, had to watch a lot, had to talk about it. So, it's scary at first. It really is like, uh, we're going to use this guy again, clean it off. At first, it's, uh, boy, this is exciting, but it's also scary. Just examine it, eyeball it. You can use your light too. That wick is so good, literally, you just pass through it once or twice and you're solid. To actually get the residue that's off, that little uh, pad isn't going to really get everything off down. So just use a Q-tip. You see a little coming off here. See, quite a bit came off. Switch over to the good side of the Q-tip, dip that in your M&K. And don't be, don't scrub it. Just lightly, kind of like Le Painter on your chip here. <laughs> Light brush strokes. I go over it a couple times. Make sure I'm getting a, a Q-tip that's coming back fairly clean. If not, nothing. So there's quite a bit of junk on there still. But that's it. That's how you successfully lift an old chip and clean out the uh, the array here that's sitting on the board. You can see it's totally smooth. No problem. So that's going to be perfect. Now, on to setting up the junk board with a good south bridge on it. That'll be the easy part. Alright guys, here we are. We're done. I've shut the machine off so you can hear me a little better. I like to take my hemostats off. That one popped off while I was playing around here. And this, I leave the uh, probe right on there. I mean, it is still pretty warm, but uh, it's it's just a little above room temperature. So, we'll take this. This just comes right off. We'll set that in a safe spot. Once again, we got to unplug the probe so we can move this around without dangling the, the multimeter at the end. So, we'll grab that. Get this out of the way. We'll set this up in a safe spot. Check the underside, see how we're looking here. Uh, nothing got damaged. It doesn't look like anything fell off. And that that's good and normal, unless you're thrashing around on the board, which you won't be if you're trying to do this professionally. So there we are. We're all good for lifting that chip. We'll just set this up in a safe spot up here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take this junk board that uh, 0031, nothing I do. I reballed all the RAM. I, I, it's, it's, uh, I didn't clean it up after I did stuff. You know, sometimes a board is just shot, so you just kind of do what you can do and salvage it for parts. So we're going to use this one. I know it's got a good, a good working south bridge on it. So we'll just lay that right in the same setup we had before. And I don't care about this too much. 
So, all I care about is this uh, south bridge right here. We're going to clamp down the board again. The only thing that I'd want to do, if I were you, if you're going to just pull stuff, like I said, capacitors don't smell very nice at all when you pop them and they're burning and they're fizzling on you. It makes you a nervous wreck in a sense. Like if you're one of those people that, you know, anything pops or make, makes a noise that's not supposed to electronically wise. So what I do is usually, if you want to spare the um, capped on tape there, if you have a whole ton lying around, what you will, your first roll you'll get, you, you, <laughs> you won't even use half of it. By the time you start really getting through stuff here, really getting it rolling, successful reballs and reflows and all that good stuff, uh, just for fun. I don't feel like smelling capacitor juice tonight, so I'm going to just throw this on here. It helps out. And I'll protect the plastic. Who knows? I might need DVD drive plug here. Lift that, put it in something else if someone else sends me something that's damaged. I mean, it's nice to have... The cool thing that you'll find out that uh, when you begin, you'll you'll get a lot of boards that actually have been messed up by other people. It's not really you, and then you'll you know won't be fixing things because your profile will be off a little bit and this and that. Well, any damaged boards you have, you have a whole bunch of good spare parts. In this case, uh, we've got a Southbridge here. This is a Falcon. It's the same as the other one here. I believe it's a different revision, but the uh, Southbridge is the same, which is cool. So if you want to verify that, you can look at the South Bridge and you look down here, let's see, it's the X0204-27, and you'll see the same thing on the South Bridge here for a Falcon. So take that one off. What I like to do is, uh, a lot of people talk about popcorning. I've never seen a South Bridge popcorn at all. It's mainly on, like, GPU stuff, but... You know, throw some MEK. The nice thing about MEK, it not only cuts through junk and all that, but it also allows uh, the extraction of moisture if there's any sitting in or around the chip. I mean, you may think, moisture? What are you talking about? But I'm talking about real, you know, microscopic amounts. I, <laughs> I use microscopic, but real small amounts of moisture. You know, like, who knows? This could have been sitting in upstate New York in the summertime, somewhere in a basement. And there's all kinds of moisture in uh Typical basement, out in the countryside anyways, an older house. But I don't know why your Xbox would be sitting in an old ancient house with a uh, damp basement in the middle of the summertime. <laughs> so, just clean that up nice, get the dust off it. And actually, I'm going to steal my probe from the other one. You can kind of slip it out of the tape. A little bit. Cut a little piece of your reflectant tape. That stuff holds the best. Don't use Capcon uh, tape for holding down a probe because you'll find that once the fluxes start flowing everywhere, it actually um, doesn't hold too well. So use this stuff. This stuff sticks great, it holds stuff in place, especially when it's stuck to itself. That nice and close. Right up next to the chip. This actually, if you want, you can have touching the chip on the uh, the pole from the old board. So I'll show you here. That's pretty much touching it. So we're good. Now we got to flux this one up. Nice and uh, a decent amount of flux here. Again, this RMA two eighteen King Bow. Works great for setting the chip and for pulling it. I love it. You're going to find that uh, to each their own when it comes to flux. Some people are going to say, oh, I like this better, or I like this. I mean, it's personal preference, honestly. Whatever works the best and doesn't ruin anything on you. That's why I like the RMA. It's, it smells nice. I mean, it may sound weird. People are like, what? Chemicals smell nice. Well... It does. It's it's got a pleasant odor to it, meaning it doesn't stink. It doesn't, you know, like drive you nuts when you're working with it. And it also it just it doesn't get all like boy, uh, you know, some other places 
or some other videos I've talked about or talked through saying that I like that chip quick. Actually, chip quick smells really nice and it, it works really well, but if you keep hefting to use it or you're touching the same spot on the board, again, for other wires, it, it turns black or it turns dark and it gets all weird and sticky. So this RMA218 is is perfect because it doesn't it doesn't get all weird. I mean, it turns brown, but it it uh it cleans off very easily. It uh, cleans off almost like sludgy wax if if that makes any sense. So once again, we're going to get this positioned. I've got my other probe here. We're going to go back to Celsius, make sure the probe's plugged into the uh, multimeter system here. By the way, I got that multimeter at uh, Home Depot. <clears throat> They're out at Lowe's. I'm a, a Lowe's guy. I don't go to Home Depot. I don't know. Uh, don't hate, but <laughs> go to Lowe's and grab one of those if you can. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the machine. We're going to use the same lead-free profile that we did before. And you can see this is a little bit easier to see now. And in a second here, I'm going to get a close-up and we're going to take a look here. All right, guys, here we are. As you've noticed, there's not a lot of protection on this one because I don't really care about the board. I mean, some people might use more protection around the chip if the board's still good. But me, I just don't care. The only thing that's good on it is uh, capacitors and these connectors here, which really absorb heat quite well, or they stand up to it. And you're, you'll notice on the back of the chips here, like I said, this board's been junk for a while, so I'm not really too concerned about this one. So, let's go ahead and position, once again, I'll take my little tool here, and I kind of center it right here, I look sideways, see where it's at. I feel this should come, should come out just a little bit more. Over here. Come over a little bit more. Then you eyeball it a little bit, see how well it is. That looks really good. Maybe just a millimeter or two towards us. Our probes are in place here, and uh, we're ready to go. I'm going to turn off my infrared cooling on top here. Both lights are on. So this is pretty much it. I'm going to uh, actually fast forward this again for you and you'll be able to see this take place here. Alright, here we go. We're almost up to temperature here, a couple degrees off. Once again, I just tap it to make sure the sooner you can uh, stop heat to the chip, the more chances it is, you know, the more chances you have of not damaging anything. So, I'm at target temp, but it needs to soak. That's another thing. Don't get worried if, there we go, see, you can see a little nudge just like that. You want to hit vacuum, you want to bring this guy up, light out of the way, swing, and swivel a little bit and then just pull it right up then turn your profile off turn your upper cooler on and there that's it and really what I do is I drop this chip right onto a heat sink I've got an old or not an old but one of the newer heat sinks for the fat turn your vacuum on everything's still on I'm gonna turn the base cooler uh, the one down in here that's uh, down underneath actually just cool off this board and get it out of the way so when we're done reboiling we can just fit uh, the other board on top. But that's it. Once you get up to 217, just wait a little bit. You gotta let it soak, but shortly after, uh, just keep your eye in with this. Uh, I recommend something wooden like this. This comes with Jimmy Super, uh, Jimmy Super Flux from uh, VGC Repair. And uh, I just take it and just nudge a corner, something like that. You can see now everything's cool. And, I don't bother clean anything if I'm not going to reuse it. So that's it. So we got our nice working chip off a uh, dead board that's not working correctly. Just pull everything out of the way, the probe. 
That's it. We can. You'll see here that uh, sometimes if you don't have the seal down right or a little flux gets into it, it'll just pop right off, and you'll see it blowing in the wind. You got that nozzle air coming up from the bottom, so that's what you saw through through the sped up part. But yeah, we'll get right to reballing, and I'll show you how to use one of these um, reballing jigs here and get the chip seated in, and also how you line up your stencil and all that good stuff. So let's get to it. All right, guys, we're back. Right here, what you're looking at is actually a GPU that I was messing around with. I was testing this braid, and it's got a bunch of flux on it. So this jig is a little messed up. Uh, a lot of videos you see, the guys have nice, clean jigs. I've been using mine a ton, so it's got uh, flux and all kinds of crap all over it. So not the cleanest setup right now, but it gets the job done. It's been set up for an Xbox GPU which we don't want to do. So what we have to do is I loosen everything up. This whole set comes with um, comes with this little guy right here. Allen wrench that you can loosen everything up. Get that to loose. Make sure you might have to drop some MEK around and clean it up a little bit because flux, I mean, I use quite a bit. You could probably get away with less, but uh, it just allows me to work a little quicker sometimes and uh, keep the heat away from the chip as much as possible so that's why a lot of flux in there so you can see <clears throat> what I like to do is here we've got our chip see I misplaced the center pin or the little little screw here that you can raise the chip up a little bit so with this little jig you have to finagle a little bit and what I do so I usually do left and right first. As you can see, you kind of finagle. Or what you can do is you set one to where you think it's going to be middle. This one end right here. So it's going to place it middle, snug that one down a little bit. Receive a text message in the process. So there we are, that's fairly middle here. One thing you have to, with the smaller chips here, let me get some light for you. Smaller ones, in a jig like this, they do take some time, plus it's all slimed up. Typically, it'll be a little cleaner than this. Like I said, from experimenting in the future, I've been, I've been, uh, Careless, I guess, and not cleaning it up. That's alright. Does the trick. We'll slide this over here like this. Kind of eyeball it and center it up. That looks pretty center. Tighten that up. And then bring these together. Now, there's other um, jigs out there that actually... Uh, they're a lot easier than this. You kind of just set them down and screw a thread and like a little bar through and it comes together and grabs it from both corners which I'm gonna pick up but this is the typical YouTube stuff you see when someone's reballing something so let's set here let's bring this guy make sure these are nice and snug don't go crazy with snugging it but uh, it's nice to have it you may put a little extra pressure on here before you tighten it I'd take care if you can fit your fingers in kinda of tighten it down quite a bit Snug it up, don't go crazy, but uh, make sure it's definitely going to stay in place. And that's the thing, see, it'll fall right out just like that, even if you do have it snug. So There's two little things here that put more pressure that kind of keep it in place, and you have to fiddle with those when you first get your, uh, your jig. In all honesty, even though you get them figured out. See, now it's a little loose on the sides, so we go ahead and bring that through. No matter how tight you get the chip, you're going to get a little play. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. See, now it's actually not going to do it to me. There's very little now. I've got it tightened down. and It'll stay snug like that. So the next step here is doing the same thing we did on the ball grid array. 
take your soldering iron here and make sure <clears throat> make sure you clean it off often with one of these things here. I definitely recommend them. So easy. And if your uh, soldering iron is a little dull, go ahead and uh, get yourself some uh, tip tinner. What you do is you just kind of refresh the tip like that. You'll see a little bit on it and then you clean the excess off. Now you got a fresh tip that'll take solder on. Literally, you can just take a whole bunch of this, make a little ball, and you just go through the chip. You don't even have to really um, press down or anything. You just let the little ball of solder on the tip kind of just pick it right up. Looks good. Wasn't too bad to begin with. Let's put that there. Clean this off. And once again, I'm going to use this uh, little deal I have here. My little paint brush thing, my foam thing. And just get all the junk right off of that. Alright. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is like before, get some flux on there. And if you want, you can spread it out, but usually that spreads out by heat. That may be a little too much, but that's all right. Okay, so now that we've got this all spread out, what we're going to do is we're going to take our braid again, just like before. I inspect it and you can kind of see where uh, the solder has been drawn up into the wick. You know what, sometimes you just gotta do it. I know it sucks, you wanna uh, you know, be as efficient as possible. But just clip that right off. I mean, you might be able to get some use out of this. Like if you clip off this, you can also use a little pair of pliers and rub that around. I go fresh, you know, when it's nice and pliable, it'll just draw that stuff right off. Uh, less time on the, the chip with the soldering iron. Once again, Pre-tin your tip here, clean it right off, and start from a corner. I start usually from the bottom left to right. Once you uh, know that you're going to be picking stuff up, just go through like this. And you can see this solder, uh, this, um, yeah, solder wick. Excuse my lack of brain tonight. I think it's too much MEK as I always reference. The chips are the easiest thing to clean off, in my opinion. You still can pull pads, but it's a lot harder than actually on the board. You want to be real careful on your actual board. On the chip, it's a little more forgiving, but still, be careful. Don't press down really hard and rush and all that stuff. So technically, we're done. It looks really good right off the bat. And this solder wick, once again, this uh, MG Chemicals, uh, the fine braid, 0.10 inches width. Usually the chip's quite hot so if you see me doing this and then you try it you're gonna actually mess your finger up a little bit but yeah that pretty much did it. So once again to start I'll take my little uh, foam brush get as much excess out as you can because there is a lot in there just from dabbing it. So what you want to do is look for any uh, rough patches with your finger just try to feel around the chip see if you get anything rough I don't feel anything at all it's it feels perfectly smooth still got a lot of flux on there so what you do is you grab a couple q-tips dip them into your MEK just go through while you're going through rotate it as well you can see that I'm rotating the q-tip I kind of go pass through, rotate a little bit, pass through again, rotate, pass through again. And you'll find this is normal on most all chips that you're going to be doing on an Xbox. Clean it up nice. Now you're seeing right here next to me, this is a GPU stencil. So we don't want that. Underneath that's actually sitting on is the uh, 
messed up uh, <laughs> south bridge. It's got a lot of junk in it. You'll find, even if you're careful, some flux still touches up on the stencil and you'll get balls like sticking to it and all that. So what we'll do, I'll show you what happens, you know, what you'll do if that happens. You know what, uh, to be honest with you, you can see all that stuck on there. If it's too, like, try your best to get all the solder balls off it uh, into the trash or whatnot on the end of a Q-tip, shoot it into the trash. And then what you want to do is actually take this stencil right out of its uh, bracket here and wash it with Dawn soap. Uh, either in a shop sink or something, make sure you're not going to be around, you know, a countertop where edibles are, you know, uh, prepared. So that's what I do. I use Dawn soap and I just scrub it out and then I go back through, take a look at it, and uh, yeah, that works really well. Okay, so here we are. Kind of eyeball it. Uh, what I'd like to do is angle it in the light and see if I've got any rough surfaces. They're all pretty shiny when they're uh, right down to the pad. Like I said, I think the uh, Southbridge is one of the most uh, happy-go-lucky chips to pull and reval. It's small, so it doesn't take a lot of time to take everything off and put everything on. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to skip through cleaning this, but I'll show you right before I'm not going to make you sit through me clean the whole thing. If you're in a hurry, you got a lot going on in the day. I just like to um, go through with some MEK. What's annoying about it is it takes a lot of Q-tips and MEK to get the flux out of the holes. So that's why I go and you know use a shop sink in the other room and Dawn soap and just wash that right out. Saves time too. You know, a lot of things you're like, oh man, I can just take a couple minutes and scrub it out. And boy, I tell you, just just do what you got to do and take it out of the bracket if it takes a little extra time. That's a instead of a little extra frustration, which is always annoying. I mean, who likes frustration, right? <laughs> so that's what I do. Is uh, just go through it like that if it's not bad. This one. You know, I pretty much slapped it up. So I'm going to go in the other room, and I'm actually going to use some Dawn. And we are going to scrub that out so it's nice, brand new, shiny, squeaky clean, what, whatever you want to call it. And we'll be right back. And I'll do the reball for you. Okay, so we uh, put this through the sink with some Dawn. You can see the difference. It's practically brand new. And like I said, you just take one little, you know that foaming Dawn stuff you can get? You just take one little squirt of it, put it on, rub it around, rub it really well in here, and uh, just air dry it with a paper towel. And if not a paper towel, just a lint-free lint cotton towel of some sort. So yeah, here we are. We're good. I'm looking at the chip right here. I am going to... This is the side we want to use, so we're going to put it in. You can't really see off frame here. I'll do it up here. What you want to do is loosely, you just put it on top like this, and you want to put the top on here. I like dumping the uh, the actual balls out this way, to the right. That's just uh, my preference. So you could do it towards you or away from you. It's just I'm left-handed, so it's in my left hand, so it works best to dump it to the right. And what you do is you just set this on, put all four screws back in. Once again, eyeball the chip once again. I do that a lot. You'll find yourself, like, if you're into this kind of thing, you just keep checking everything, keep looking it over, seeing how it is, and give it another feel real quick. Perfectly smooth. Once again, go back to your uh, stencil. After it's fitted correctly, the right way, some stencils you'll get, and you'll see that uh, the little wording is, you'll have to flip it over, the stencil is punched backwards. Some are weird like that. Someone was having a, a a backwards day or opposite day or something somewhere. And don't snug these down. Just turn them down till there's a little bit of resistance. Just kind of don't even tighten them. See how we already have this locked down? Well, the reason for uh, not tightening these all the way down is you want 
this to move around a little bit. See how that moves around? Uh, let's get a frame here. See how that's moving around a little bit? That's what you want. Instead of adjusting these four guys, you already got it centered. So you put this down here and you look at the chip and what I'll do is I'll bring the camera angle a little closer, a little more from the top so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, you may not be able to see this because of the light. Let's turn the light off see if we get any uh, any better light here. I'll see if you can see this. But you'll move this around on top of the chip until you get everything matched up. And there, it might be a, a chore at first. You can't see how you can see those pads move around like that. You'll keep moving it around until you get everything lined up. A lot of this plays a around this whole thing but do your best to line this up sometimes it takes a little bit so you can see that that looks right I just gotta twist this thing a little bit there we are but this is a lot easier than using those four lugs down below and moving it around and putting it back and moving it around I mean, some people may disagree, but uh, for me, usually this just takes a little bit. So let's turn the light back on. We're going to get a little reflection. But I can actually see everything lining up perfectly. So, once you find your sweet spot, lightly tighten these with your fingers here, uh, finger tighten. That way you're not going to throw it off into limbo again. Then you'll just spend another 15 seconds to a minute calibrating this. Okay, how I have my chips, uh, chip set up, even with the, the top playing around, it's looking pretty good. All right. That looks really good. Okay, so what you want to do after we got this lined up, we took a look here and now it's perfect even with it moving around a little bit on top of the chip I don't see much movement at all so like I said this is the most hardy chip to work on here the South Bridge in my opinion and it, it is going to use 0 .60 millimeter balls as well I didn't mention that earlier but thought I would here so this stuff you don't need a lot it's a superior tacky flux 8600 RMA water soluble and uh, this is a 10 cc tube. I bought this a year ago and you can see I've only used half of it. You don't need a ton of this stuff. Once again, Superior Tacky Flex 8600 RMA. You can see it's been laying around the shops all sticky. This has been around for a year. So all you gotta do, really, and believe me, a lot of people are, when you first start out you'll be like Oh man, I'm going to use more than the guy on the video. I mean, you need a little more than just a little. No, seriously. So you don't mess up your stencil. What's going to happen is if you use a ton on there, the flux is actually going to ooze up into the um, stencil. And what's going to happen is the ball is going to set in there just fine. You'll see everything. But when you lift, what's going to happen is the ball is going to stick right in the stencil. Then you'll have to manually put the ball on. And I'll, like I said, this thing is amazing. Once again, I use this for everything. I think the two things that are the most handy tool in the shop are the X-Clamp Team Executors X-Clamp removal tool and this Radio Shack uh, it's a little pick and blade let me tell you you can uh, kinda get a little flux on there and use it for the balls I'll probably have to go through it I'll be darned if I actually get through without having to use this thing so pick up one of these it'll save you a lot of time frustration it lets you get in and put that ball where you need it on the one you miss so once again I'll show you how much you need here all you have to do, press down a little bit, start on, and you need this little line. Even this is almost too much. Yeah, that's that's almost too much right there. Some people like to use a little brush, if you will, or um, I just use my finger. And what I do is I just lightly take it at first, spread it from top to bottom. And literally, that was way too much, but you need a little to get it spread out. Like a little, little more to at least get it spread out. 
kind of eyeball it a little bit. You can tell. The more you have, you can see the pads are a little darker, almost looks brownish green. And if there's dust in the air, just make sure you wipe it out of the way. Like you'll see little particles. Like if if dust is floating around, I don't know if you have a dusty shop or there's just stuff on your fingers prior. You can just keep wiping this down like this. Try to get the stuff off the edges, the excess. What I do, I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, that's still looking like a lot, so usually what I do is I have a towel on me or a paper towel, wipe my finger off, then go over it again. Like I said, it's just enough to keep those balls in place when you pull the uh, stencil. There's a couple little tricks in the f further in the video here that I'll show you that I like doing if you have really stubborn balls that don't sit on their pads. It's so annoying. And another thing is, if you have a lot on here, what's going to happen is when you go to uh, weld the balls or uh, flow them back onto the chip with your uh, heat wand or an AU 852 or 968 or whatever, they're going to go flying everywhere and it's a pain in the rear, let me tell you. So, that's looking pretty good. There's barely any on there. You can see in the angle of the light, it's like a little haze over the chip. So this is the moment of truth. When you feel like it's good enough, you set this down. Try not to take this off again. We tried our best to align everything, so everything's just going to stay there. It's raised up on the four pegs on each side right here. Underneath there's one, two, three, four pegs. You grab your solder balls, and um, these are the ones I got these from sra-solder.com, September 7th, 11th, so these are a year old. And you just open these up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Eyeball the uh, pattern, make sure everything's on, on correctly right on and just sprinkle a little bit try your best if you want to be efficient try sprinkling on seeing how many you can fill before getting too much in here some people like the approach see right there there's way more than you need but some people like to dump it and fill it and then shake it and then dump it out me I just <clears throat> I found that uh, if you do it that way it uh, there's uh, stuff moves around and I'm just very impatient. So stuff moves around. I hate having to recalibrate sometimes. So I, uh, you can get for three bucks out of Lowe's, you can get uh, these little paint brushes. Uh, be careful when you're using these because if you're really digging in and moving the balls out of the way, what you're going to do actually <clears throat> is you're going to um, push this down until the flux underneath it will get through and it will create your brush. Uh, it will create some stickiness which will group all these balls up. Then you'll just have to throw these balls away instead of throwing them back into your container here. So don't push, just lightly brush these around. So once again, lightly brush these. Just literally float your hand on top. Some are bare and some will not go in no matter what, so Then you'll run into this too. I've got the stencil a little too high. So what's going on is it's accepting two balls to the grid. That's another thing you can do. You think you got it perfect? But it's a little too high on some of these. Which is that's better than having it too low and then having them pop out and then your brush getting into the flex and it's a real pain. So I am definitely going to have to use sometimes what I do even not to disturb this is all like from practice doing it quite a few times your way of doing this will be different you may just use this as a little guide but uh, this is just what I've gone through and some of the frustrations it all has to do with your equipment too because sometimes your equipment is uh, a little crazy and 
you got to finagle more with the equipment than actually getting your work done. All right, so it looks like we've got everything there. I'm going to actually lift this with the balls all like that because I'm not going to disturb anything. So just lightly lift. Kind of give it a snapshot. Okay, we're done. And then you can dump these balls right back over here. So it looks pretty good, actually, for all the for how low it was. So now comes the point. I think I'm going to speed this up for you, but I'm going to let you watch me actually peek through and see which ones need adjusting because some are sitting next to each other. And if your tip is too messed up, just dip it in your MEK and then just kind of like dry it off with either a paper towel or your fingers. If you have any cuts on your fingers, be careful the MEK, it stings. So I see see that we have one extra one here. So I'll take that guy off. To be honest with you, this is uh, one of the better ones I've had on film. I've got an extra one right here. And if you find that uh, you can't pick them up, just uh, rub your tool on the corner of the chip. Flux there. What you can do is then after that, just right where you rubbed, you tap on the little ball. And you can pull it right off. So we'll just move them onto the pad. I see that one isn't even there. So just take it, grab the ball that you had before. You can kind of salvage some and then drop it back down. All right, that's looking good. You're gonna see that you can't go over every single one, but if you know after some time knowing, you'll uh, your brain will get used to uh, knowing the distances of the balls apart from each other and stuff like that. So you'll know which ones you'll have to adjust in the future. So it's just about trial and error, all that good stuff. So we're good. I mean, that was a decent one. That's typical though. Every time you do one, most of the time you're gonna sit there for about an extra five minutes Maybe not five minutes. That's maybe a long shot. If you're new, you're gonna sit there for maybe up to an hour, <laughs> uh, just making sure uh, it gets easier as it goes along and it's not as bad. So, if you have an AU nine six eight or A five two A plus plus or something like that, I am going to uh, I'm gonna switch the angle a little bit and I'm gonna turn my AU on. Let that boot up. Do its whole little scroll. Some liquid courage on in my department. It's coffee, and here we are. We've got our uh, AU A52. I've got this little nozzle on here. What you want to do, actually, when you start out, when it's on, I have mine set to 430 degrees, and uh, what I do is I'm way up in the air. I'm up here, and what I do is I kind of give it a hot air bath, and the uh, air flow should be all the way down to the bottom, which is F06. And uh, I kind of give it a feel, see where it's at, let it get warmed up. So I bring it right up to 430. Some people use a little bit lower, but 430 is uh, what I've seen on a lot of forums and on YouTube. So you can feel it in your hand. Ah, it's pretty toasty. So right about here is where you want to start. You kind of want to hunch over and look at it, see how everything's moving around. If it is, uh, as you get closer you'll see everything move around. Let's get this cord out of the way. So 
So you can see stuff moving a little bit. The less flux you use, that's why you don't want to use a lot, because the less you use, the less these are going to roll around, you're going to spend less time finagling with them, which is a pain. So you kind of just go around, you can see some solder balls start turning molten before. What you're doing is you're soaking the chip with heat, getting everything ready, pre-primed if you will. I like to, oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Too much flux, you get a little ball and it, it uh, rolls out of the way. Once the balls become molten, though, they'll sit right under that pad, which is nice. There we go. So you'll have to do that quite a bit. You'll see, sometimes I start in an area that I know is going to be troublesome. I just keep working at it, waiting until they get up to temperature to... This cord's right in the way, but okay, you can see them start to set down. It's totally normal if the balls turn kind of like a hazy color. That's totally normal. And I just had one joined together, so that's what can happen. So what we'll do is we'll just go through, see all the other ones. You can see that that one rolled away. So if you don't take your time and just uh, keep track of everything, you'll see stuff like that happen. This one. While you're fixing it too, make sure you know where your nozzle's pointed at too your hot air wand. Okay. So I had two joints in this. That's that's normal. When you're new. Alright, so they're all seated except two. Two joined together. I didn't see that because I'm recording right now and I'm concentrating more on my camera angle. <laughs> oh boy. Nice excuse, eh? Alright. So, there's two ways you can do this. One is flux the areas where they joined, or you can start all over again. So, because it is quite tedious to start over again, we just went through all that stuff. What you can do sometimes Put a little flux on the joined area. And if you're really careful and surgical with your soldering iron, you can actually get those areas back down and then just drop a couple balls on them and sweat them back. So sometimes you're not so lucky. The braid will pull up way more than you want. This is stuff it's kind of crazy to be honest with you. So there we are. I pretty much just tapped it and your soldering iron you just clean it up again. You can either use braid or soldering iron but you got to be very careful. Once you compromise another ball you pretty much got to take that one out too. And So there we are. So if you're lucky, you've taken enough off to where you can put another one on. A lot of people would just tell you to start over, to have a better, but I've done this enough times to where I know it works. And be careful too. Wait until your chip cools down because what's going to happen is, I did this once before. I used a tool. I just got done sweating all the balls back onto the chip and uh, I touched it and it takes a while for molten solder to settle back down so what I did was I pretty much screwed up the entire corner of one of these chips the reball method
All right, guys, so I finished the chip. Everything's all said and done. It's all seated in. And There's one thing I wanted to show you, though, that if you have a couple balls that half seat and it's just you can't get them in and you just don't want to fry the chip you know, with excessive heat, what I sometimes do is uh, take the syringe, get a little drop formed in the end, and then heat it up, almost touching it, and kind of let it drop down and heat that area. You'll see the ball uh, set right on the pad. And uh, I really like that. It uh, makes it so you don't have to worry about uh, too much heat. You know, you're not drenching it in uh, tons and tons of heat and frying the chip before you even get it onto the board. So you're pretty much trying to trying not to kill the new component here. So it's done. I'm gonna let it cool just a little bit. We're gonna turn off our uh, AU. Now you can see. Uh, Previously, I sped up some footage so you could see me finagling with it, but we had a couple balls join, and there's a couple things you can do that I've experimented on. Is that uh, if you have a, a ball join up, you can uh, sometimes get away with using a little wick, solder wick on the outside edges and the inside edges, but when they're in the middle, most people are like, ah, crud, i got to start over again. Well, if you're skilled and you've experimented quite a bit, you can use an ultra-fine you know, soldering point or your soldering iron and uh, touch that point that uh, fused together and you can kind of uh, draw away you know with a clean tip you can draw away the join balls and then you can put other ones down it does take some finagling though that uh, this one I did not redo you're seeing the one I started with okay she's cooled down what I do is uh, q-tips on a reball they leave a lot of a lot of cotton strands everywhere. It drives me nuts. So sometimes what I do is I don't necessarily dump it on, but you can use a syringe or, and I use this, uh, this is a gun cleaning brush. You can get, and this isn't metal either. This is um, some sort of uh, plastic of some sort. And I just uh, go through and clean it up a bit with MEK. Some of the uh, flux is going to linger in that brush, so make sure you've got your brush rinsed out with this MEK. This also works for if you're using Q-tips and you got a ton of strands in there. I sit here and... This also doubles as a, uh, a test to see how well your balls are seated, because if you have a couple that aren't seated well, they'll pop off this way, but usually if you're putting that temperature to this chip, they should seat pretty well. So I'm going to get a close angle here. So you can see there's still quite a bit of flux on there. It does take, this won't get it all off. This at least gets it cleaned up so there's not a ton of excess uh, sitting in between. You just want to get this nice and clean so uh, the flux that you put on the board when you're welding it back down is going to do all the work instead of, you know, it balls drawing together. See, if you can see this right now, these on a reball, you can see like the strands. Not on the camera, but if you're working on this in your own shop, see it's it's picking up strands left and right. I do do that with a Q-tip just to get all of it out of here. Then what you can do again, or you can just skip this part, and you can just get all this crap out of here. Another thing you can do if you have a clean vat of MEK sitting in like a glass or, or something metal, you can throw the chip right into it after doing this and slosh it around in there. Actually dissolve all those, uh, all the flux in it and uh, get it spiffed up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw my chip actually See, there's quite a bit of flux lingering. Go through and clean everything up. There's a lot of flux on here. <clears throat> Usually when you're starting out, you're not going to have this much flux sitting around. It's because I haven't cleaned this out from prior uses. But I'm just going to throw this right in my uh, MEK 
swish it around in there. That usually cleans them right off. You'll see it evaporate here and we'll see what we got. Yep, that's pretty clean. Use your brush again a little bit. Just trying to make sure all those little fibers are out of there. Which drives me nuts when they're... You can uh, visually inspect. Everything looks good. I don't see any merges with any other balls here. Alright, just a little bit more cleaning to do. I can see just a little bit of flux. Now try not to do that as much as I was advising there earlier, like where you drop a drip of uh, that tacky flux down and seat some of the balls. That's only for like, if you just can't get a ball to seat and it's half, you know, half on the pad, you know it is. After experimenting, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's like last resort stuff. It kind of helps you out. She's as good as she's going to get. There's going to be just a tad bit more. I could use that little sponge thing, but that doesn't clean in between. You know, a little brush and swishing it around dust. So There it is. All right, let's uh, get the other board set up and we'll reflow this and we'll show you the outcome here. All right, guys, we're back here and we're going to get everything out of the way here. We're going to pull our probe from this one. And this one's still on here. Take these off. Get rid of this board. back to our board that we are working on here. I'm going to set that down. Get that all set. We're going to put our probe back. Usually you can uh, slide it right back in here. Okay, I'm going to rotate this so it's touching the PCB. Alright, that's good. And uh, we'll be right back and we'll get a uh, close-up. Alrighty, so here's our uh, board. We're back. What I'm going to do real quick while we're taking a look at this, I'm going to clamp this back down to my board supports. Everything is nice and level. Alright, so the board's nice and uh, stiff on there. Actually, there's one thing I want to do. Sometimes these loosen up and you'll have to tighten them down. There, now it's rock solid. Okay, I was just checking everything here. Make sure everything's nice and stable. So what we're going to do next is we're going to apply the uh, Kingbow RMA 218 to the board. 
Once again, there's this little three dollar pack. You can get these little um, brushes here. Thing is, some of them the uh, little bristles come off, so be careful when you're putting this back on. You're applying. Now this is just like what we were doing only we're going to use the RMA 218. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to actually take it. We're going to start up on the top. We're going to make this nice little line. That's too much, but uh, just to give you an example, you can take the brush and you want to wipe this all across. And you only need a little bit. And you can go to the other side and look in the angle of the light and see how much is on it still. And a little bit more off of there. Keep going back and forth until you think it's just a nice glaze. You can tell it looks like a, it's hazy. It gets hazier as you uh, take more off. Okay, that looks good. Okay, be careful, like if you're not used to Xbox boards, you'll see here on the lower right that there's no uh, little dot there. That's because I, I've covered it up with the tape, but I know that because I've done enough to, uh, I've memorized it. So you'll just take this and drop this down as best you can right off the bat. And the cool thing with this is, once again, these guys will make your life easier. This dual tool here, if you will. And what you'll do is just take a look, and if you get it, a good thing to do is uh, before to get used to this, is actually take a picture of your board before you even pull any chips or anything, and see how they look around the lines. That way, if you get it set onto it. The next time and it looks just like your photo, you can kind of compare it, then you know you're close close to dead on. So it's a lot of cross angling. Walk around and take a look and see how this looks with that. That looks good. Once again, I'm, uh, I'm one of those guys that go around it a couple times, take a look. In all honesty, that looks dead on. This light's got to move. And the nice thing is that all you have to do is go up to about 190. 190, and then what I do, once I'm up to 190, I shut the profile off, and I let it soak up to 195, and that usually gets me a nice... Reflow, lead free. So we're gonna drop this down on it. I'm gonna don't touch the chip. Once you get it aligned, don't do that thing. Do your best to eyeball and see where your top meter, top heater is here. Kind of go around, take a look. Underneath, kind of look at the top of the little heater. Yes, we have that looks dead on as well. I'm gonna tighten that down. Make sure my uh, thermocoupler meter is on. We're gonna turn off top cooling, cooling in general. And this is the fun part. I think this is the uh, the most fun. After uh, you're done, all you do is hit the start button. And you pretty much have like nine minutes or so just to grab a cup of coffee or 
or do something, look up something on the forums. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to pause this so you can actually uh, watch it, fast forward, and we'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, we've hit target temps, 195, and there we are. So we'll turn this away, put our IR core on, so pretty much what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, let everything cool down to room temperature, then when that's done, we're going to set up our NAND leads for a regular NANDX and we're going to try reading the NAND the normal SPI way. So we'll uh, get right to that as soon as we're at room temperature. Okay, she's not exactly room temperature yet, but what I'm going to do is, now that it's cooled down quite a bit, is what you can start doing is taking off the tape very carefully and slowly. There's going to be a little residue left behind. Just very carefully examine underneath how it looks. Like I said, it's going to leave a little residue. But you can see here, I was really fortunate. That's why I seat down the tape right around the chip. You can see on the board. In a second here we'll get a tight shot and we'll actually show you what I was talking about with that tape. You can see since I taped around quite well right around the chip there's not a lot of uh, flow from flux. The only flux you're really seeing is from when I, I had to put a new NAND on this. The only way I was able to really mess with this earlier was uh, I actually had to de program a NAND on a board that I had a uh, GPU that I salvaged. I was still able to read the NAND and program the stock image for this JTAG onto that NAND and then I pulled the other one. That's how I did it to test at first but I didn't have a daemon in stock so I could do uh, the other one but then it's just su such a hassle I, I wanted to make sure that the gentleman I'm doing this for had ease of access to programming the NAND in the future for future updates you know through uh, JRunner. So you can see there's not a lot of flux. And since it's uh, almost room temperature, it's just a little warm, I'm going to take some Q-tips and I'm going to go around and just clean it up. It almost looks like nothing ever happened to this board as it sits. You'll see that I'm pulling up some junk. Some leftover flux, clean the chip off. Nothing's moved, everything's still there, all the surface, mount, surface mounted resistors. So clean all this right off. No capacitors are blown, you can see they're all in working order, physically. Just inspect the board, see what's going on with it. Nothing should look any different really. And the board is cool. We're going to take it out of the uh, brace here. Make sure everything's organized. Keep my airdrop in one area. And All right, we're going to pull this off the support and we're going to put it down and we're going to solder in the NAND leads. Okay, we're back at the, uh, the bench here. Oh my goodness, they found me. I'm going to take this off and inspect, see how we're doing. I do not see any difference from before. Which is what I expected. It's 
So usually, once again, this guy is perfect for this. Find an area. Sneak in there and get that off. So there we are. Alright, let's get to uh, soldering those NAND leads here. Before we start, we're going to put some power to the board. We are going to plug in our Nandex. And we're going to plug in our NAND leads. Now I may need to touch a couple wires up here. I think two of them might have an issue, but let's do it. And there it is. We are reading the NAND. We swapped that uh, south bridge and we're getting NAND reads now. So this whole operation has been successful. And that's uh, a demo of the Scottle IR360 Pro. Right now there's a new version out, but if you can get your hands on a uh, 360 Pro uh, version 1, these things are a beast. Let me tell you, that's an understatement. This Anything I've thrown at it, it's fixed it. And uh, believe me, I'm not going to say that uh, it's going to work like that for you right off the bat if you're just getting into this, but I've spent the last two years studying, reading, understanding temperatures, the whole science behind uh, how everything works. So that's why I'm successful with it. I mean, it's kind of like when you're first getting into a guitar, your guitar instructor is going to be shredding and going nuts on it. But when you pick it up, you'll be palm muting and, you know, like tweaking all the strings and, you know, sounding like garbage. <laughs> Not that I'm saying you're going to be garbage with the machine. I'm just saying that uh, it does take a while to get used to it. And a lot of reading, a lot of testing. Let me tell you, don't feel like uh, you're not as good as anyone else in the forum. If you keep breaking boards and you keep having to throw away stuff, don't throw away your boards. There's going to be a lot of parts and stuff like this. For example, we had to uh, swap the south bridge from another Falcon that I junked up because I, I fried it with uh, my hot air station, <laughs> the uh, AU, A52. So there you have it, guys. The uh, IR360 Pro with a Falcon South Bridge swap. So we're able to read the NANDs now because something was broken at, uh, on, in the old South Bridge. So there you go, from pulling to reballing to rewelding to getting a uh, JTAG back, 7371 Falcon JTAG. So we've got the uh, number five kit from Team Executor on the bottom, which uh, is always great stuff. Team Executor for the win and also uh, BGA mods and uh, Scottle. So guys, thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit. And uh, take what I say with a, uh, a grain of salt because there's, a, there's so many different uh, things that people do that, that uh, work for them as well. You're getting the gist of it, so you can see how things work and all that good stuff. So, if you like this video, let me know in the comments below, and uh, let me know if you want to see anything else regarding uh, ball grid array, uh, reballing, swapping, this and that. So, this is some of the services I I offer here at the uh, Johnny Guns shop here. So, guys, you take it easy, and we'll catch up to you soon. See you, guys.